When you have some goal out here that you're stretching for and reaching for, that takes you out of your comfort zone, you'll find out some talents and abilities you have that you didn't know you have. When the messenger of misery visits you, what are you going to do? What will keep you in the game? There are things that you think you'll never need to know that you may only need to know one time in your life, but that could save your life because you had that knowledge. Unless you attempt to do something beyond that, which you've already mastered, you will never grow. What is it that you looked at at some point in time and you decided that you couldn't do it, that you talked yourself out of it? Ladies and gentlemen, you have so much, so much to offer, so much to give, so much to do. But doing it and sitting around waiting for it to happen, it's just going to stay in neutral. You have to electrify the desire that you have, that you once had. So the next time you feel like complaining, you feel like worrying, and you're so concerned about other things that doesn't necessarily concern you. Ask yourself, is it making you better? Is it taking you higher? Are you going further? Or are you just being complacent? Imagine if Michael Jordan was scared of missing. He would have never taken a shot. Imagine if Steve Jobs was afraid of people not liking his product. There would be no iPhone. So ask yourself this. Do you want to be a person who fears failure? Or do you want to be a person who loves success? Which one? Because you're going to have to pick today. And I'll tell you one thing. One is a failure and one is a success. And if you love success, there is nothing that can stop you. All those negative things people say will mean nothing. They're going to talk about how only 1% make it to the top. Big deal. Want to know something else? Only 1% stick with that fitness program long enough to see results. Only 1% of nerds stick with that video game long enough to get good at it. Only 1% of relationships stick it out to the end. That doesn't mean you have a 1% chance. It just means you can't behave like the 99%. You'll have to do something better than giving up a month from now. Right, of course you don't just give everything you got all the time, right? You get to a point where you learn to be efficient and effective in every aspect of your life. And for most people, it's not a problem of skill set. It's a problem of character. And empty the bucket is having the right character to be consistent and empty out everything you got in every aspect of your life. I think the true measure of wealth is, uh, is happiness, right? Like I really do. And it's not saying that I'm against money. I'm not against that at all. Because you gotta, you gotta work hard, make your money, take care of your family, and be able to bless people. But I think it's a lot of people with so-called wealth and they don't have joy and they don't have happiness, right? And I feel like joy, happiness is peace and peace is the most important things we can possess, right? And for most people, their material possessions, they feel are the most important. For me, when you got joy, when you got peace, when you got happiness, I think that's true wealth because you can't put a price on that. I dare you to take a trip to your local hospital. And if you have an opportunity to walk down those corridors and witness so many different people, different age groups, different ethnicities, and each one of these individuals are fighting something, they're dealing with some type of sickness. And some of these sicknesses, they may not be able to recover from. I dare you to walk down a neighborhood where there are many people that are homeless and have no place to go, no food to eat, barely even have clothes on their backs. 
I dare you to realize that maybe you just don't have it so bad after all. Maybe it's time for you to realize and recognize that your troubles are not that bad. Maybe it's time that you realize that you need to get away from the drama that's in your life. Maybe it's time for you to stop chasing misery and start chasing your dreams. Reconnect with yourself. Because this is not the time for you to be wasting. Putting yourself back instead of pushing yourself forward. I want to explain the biggest myth that most people think leads them to success. And here's the myth. You might believe if you're scared to fail, you won't fail. Lies. Biggest myth ever. And I believed it. You see, I always thought that being scared to fail in life would literally keep me from failing. I would look at the losers around me and I would say, sheesh, I never want to turn out like him. I really believe this train of thought would help me succeed. Until one day, I was walking down the street and I saw an old man. Had a hat, suspenders, and a cane. He was about 80 years old. This old man was barely walking. He could walk, but the cane helped a lot. He was struggling. Everybody is against you or don't believe in you no more. And let me tell you something, that's a lonely feeling. It's a lonely feeling, particularly people that you're doing it for. Most people take their greatness, take their ideas to the graveyard with them. Listen to me, if it was easy, everybody would do it. There are people right now who are working who don't want to work. There are people who hate their jobs, but they keep getting up to do it. The wealthiest place on the planet is the graveyard. Because in the graveyard, we will find inventions that we never, ever were exposed to. Ideas, dreams that never became reality. Hopes and aspirations that were never acted upon. I think um, we help people in different ways. Right? It's almost like leadership. Right? You find some leaders that are vocal, right? that can talk. You find other leaders that lead by example. They're not big talkers, right? They're just the guys you watch. They're going to do their thing. And you can point to them and say, hey, man, you see the way that guy works and does his thing? Follow him. And I think the same for opposition and adversity. You find some people, they can work their way through it, and then they can speak about it and tell people. You got others that deal with it, and they can work their way through it, and you almost have to pry it out of them. The reason that um, I think belief is important is because like when you're young or when you do something and you're a novice right and you start out doing it and you might think you can do something with it or you might not you might do it and it's being driven by your passion and then somebody comes along that's a little bit older or even more experienced and they can see it in a way that you can't see it right and so i think it's important with belief because if a person believes in you in a way that you don't believe in yourself you can rent that person's belief until you get strong enough to possess your own, right? And you use that person's belief to fuel you every single day, right? Because you can have a level of belief with what you're doing, but you can go back to a certain set of circumstances that tell you, nah, it's not gonna happen. And so you rent that person's belief until you get strong enough to possess your own. You can be great, but you're living on reserve, right? You didn't, you didn't empty the bucket, right? You didn't give everything you had to every aspect of your life. Like for most people, they're great professionally, but they end up becoming a public success and behind closed doors, they're private failure. Not because they don't have the talent or the skill set, they don't have the character, right? That they can apply it and be consistent in every aspect of their life and empty out everything they got to everything, right? Now one would say, okay, well, when do you tone it back, right? You find pockets to turn it back.